Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are going to be looking at the various routes that water takes in order to move from the root hair cell into the xylem and we're going to look at the first route which is called the apoplast route. There are two others therefore there will be two other videos that you can watch after this one that highlight the other alternative routes. Now if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Now if you are in grade 10 make sure you've got your hands on my cheat sheet study guide which has released on the 30th of April 2024 so if you're watching this video after this date make sure to go and get your hands on it it's going to make life sciences so easy I've summarized everything for you I've put all my tips and tricks in all these notes hence the name the cheat sheet it just feels so easy studying from my study guide. Now let's dive into the topic. Now, before this video, you should have watched an introduction to plant transport so you understand the structures and the tissues involved. Um, and so what we're going to do now is look at the route it's taking and why it takes that route. And so this diagram here, we're going to focus on the apoplastic pathway, which is through the cell wall. We will be doing the symplastic pathway in the next video. But essentially what is happening is Water is going to enter from the soil and it's going to go into the epidermis. Specifically, the epidermal tissue they're talking about here is those root hair cells. Now, you need to know how they are structured in order to facilitate this, okay? Because they have special adaptations, so we need to know those. Now, once water is in the epidermal tissue, it is going to make its way through the various layers, but this is the apoplastic route, which means it's going to move along the cell wall. Now, this is the main way. So I'm just going to make a little note here. This is the main route that water is going to take, especially when there is high transpiration. Now what is transpiration? Transpiration is when there is a rapid amount of water being absorbed because temperatures are high or wind is high and water is being lost through the leaves. Now if you want you can go and watch the transpiration video that I have also linked above now in case you want to revise what transpiration exactly is. Because transpiration creates something called transpiration pull. And that's exactly what we're actually looking at here. We are looking at how the loss of water through the leaves pulls the water out of the ground into the roots and up the plant through the xylem. Now, that is the mechanism that is helping us get the water through the cell walls. But what's interesting is we get to a kind of, um, let's call it a blockade, like an area we can't get past. And that's going to be over here, the endodermis. Now, endo means the inner and dermis is kind of like a skin. So it's the innermost skin layer. It's the opposite of the epidermis. And it has this very unique feature over here called the Kasparin strip, which I'm going to elaborate on shortly as to what that is. But the ultimate problem is that once water starts moving into the root, it needs to keep its momentum and it needs to be almost forced into the xylem in large amounts in order to maintain some something called turga pressure. And turga pressure is how cells stay full of water and that's how they stay firm and full and plants stay standing upright. But now, how do we get over this problem? How do we get past the endodermis? Because it has something called the Kasparin strip and the Kasparin strip is waterproof. So let me explain how we're going to get around this problem. As the water is moving along the cell walls that we can see here in pink, it's going to get to this cell over here, the endodermal cell, which I've mentioned before, and the Kasparin strip. Now, there's a couple of things I need you to know. Number one, the Kasparin strip sits on the outside of the cell. So I want you to imagine like a present and you're putting like a ribbon around it. I want you to think of the Kasparin strip as this ribbon-like structure. It is on the outside only and it doesn't go inside the cell. 
Now, the positives to this is if water is moving along the cell walls, when it meets the Kasparin strip, like we can see here on this diagram, what's going to happen is it's going to force the water to stop moving along that route, and it's now going to dip into and inside the cell, and then it's going to make its way into the xylem, which is what we want. We want the water to get into the xylem, but there's even more that is facilitating this because this is very important. Endodermal cells, they don't just have the Kasparin strip um, to facilitate water movement, to force it into the xylem. They have something else, and this is really important. They are going to secrete salts. So the endodermal cell is going to secrete out salts. Now, why is that a big deal? That is a big deal because what it's doing is it's creating a water potential. And we covered this in the first video on this topic, which is essentially where water moves from a high water potential to a low water potential. Now, how do you make that potential? You make that potential with salt. And so what happens is the endodermal cells secretes salts, and I'm just going to use these green dots as representative of salts, into the xylem. Now, what does that do? That creates a low water potential inside of the xylem, and that makes a high water potential inside the endodermal cell. Because remember, the Kasparin strip is like pulling, it's like forcing the water in because it's waterproof, so it avoids it and goes into the cell. And now what happens is you have this consistent flow of water from high to low, facilitating turgor pressure, transpiration pole, and making sure that there is always enough water in a plant. Now, it is also this reason why overwatering a plant can be problematic, because as you can imagine, plants are going to just keep on absorbing water if you keep giving it to them. Now, as always, I like to sum up our videos in a terminology recap, and there are really only three key words in this particular video that I need you to know, and that is, number one, transpiration pull. That is the force that is actually facilitating water movement through the roots, where you suck water out of the soil through the cortex, through the endodermis, and into the xylem, and then up to the leaves, and that is where water is lost through the leaves. Now, to facilitate this and to make sure that water is always moving into the xylem, we learned about the Kasparin strip. It is a waterproof layer on the outside of endodermal cells, and it ensures that water that is moving along the cell wall is going to move into the cytoplasm so that we can put it into the xylem. And to do this, we find it in the endodermis. Now, the endodermis or the endodermal cells, they also assist as well because once the water is inside of them, they still want the water to leave into the xylem. And so what do they do? They actively secrete salts. And remember, that means if they're actively doing it, they need energy. And they're doing that to create a water potential so that water is always moving from a high to a low. Why? Because wherever salt goes, water follows. So if I make the xylem salty, water will always be attracted to it. Now, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again soon. Bye!